Alright guys, so today I'm going to be working on the uh, blast plates for the Subaru. Now let me just kind of give you an idea what blast plates are if you don't know. So I don't know, really know why they're called blast plates, but uh, essentially it's a plate. It's going to look a little different than this. It's going to have like uh, bracing on it and stuff. But it's a plate that you bolt to a certain part of your transmission where the uh, case bolts together. And it's supposed to stiffen it up because under like high torque the uh, transmission twists and the case flexes because it's not the stiffest aluminum transmission so it flexes a little bit and that makes the gears misalign whether it's uh, inward or outward and then um, you can break your, the teeth off your gears so where this comes into play it stiffens up the case so that it doesn't flex as much or at all uh, making your transmission more durable so um, I'm going to school for engineering, so I know how to use um, CAD software. This is Fusion 360. So I just took some measurements off of my um, transmission to find where to place the bolt holes and stuff. And then I created this drawing. You can see there's a thickness there, there's holes, all that stuff. Okay, so I clicked on these two points right here, and you can see down here the distance is 160 millimeters. Um, that's not a point, that's not a bolt hole, that's just a point for the radius. That point and that point is 90 millimeters. This point and this point is, yeah, 175 millimeters. So those are the measurements. Uh, it's about an eight by eight, so I got some eight by eight plate right here to make it out of. And uh, what I did was, so I have the, um, the 3D design. I went over here, I clicked designs, drawing, drawing from design, and then that brings up this other page. And then you pretty much pick the view you want and make the scale one to one. So you can see down in the bottom corner, it says one to one. Uh, and then you can output it as a PDF and then print it as actual size. And when you print it, it comes out like this, I guess depending on what um, you're printing, but you could see in my drawing, I put it right up in the very corner so that it would print the whole thing. So this is the actual size and I double checked the measurements. They're all correct on this. Uh, so I printed out a few of those. I'm gonna glue this to the plate right here um, so that I can drill the holes and cut it out and stuff. So there's a few companies out there who make these um, blast plates and uh, they're very expensive they're like uh, 300 to 400 dollars depending on the company uh, and then, yeah it's essentially a plate steel with some reinforcements on it you know whatever you want to do and some hardware right here I got this is an eighth inch plate that I had laying around uh, I'm gonna do um, a test test cut on this one just to make sure the holes are correct because it's kind of hard to measure the holes but uh, pretty much I'm gonna make one plate out of this just to make sure my measurements are correct and then I got 3 16 inch steel plates I got two of them these are thick boys and that's going to be for making the actual um, the actual one if the measurements are correct if they're not correct I could tweak it in the drawing and then print out a new uh, stencil uh, but just in case I got these two stencils printed out already for these two plates, I think they were seven bucks each, so fourteen dollars for the flat plate. And then I went to the scrap pile at the metal place, and I got some steel tubing to act as spacers because you need spacers to space the holes out from the transmission. Um, and I found that in the scraps, so it was like a uh, It was like fifty cents a pound, and I think it was like a pound, so it was like fifty cents for that. And then I got some uh, scrap square tube that was like a dollar a pound. I think that was two and a half pounds. So, you know, not too expensive. Um, did pretty good on, you know, saving money on the parts, raw materials. So we're under $20 as far as raw materials goes. So for hardware, I had to buy some special stuff. Uh, these two back bolts are M8s and these are M10s. So I got M8 and M10 all thread. All the bolts have to be the same length since you want the place to be flat. Um, so you need spacers to accommodate and these are the measurements, but I'll show you these better later Yeah, so these are the bolts that I was looking for. I was looking for an M8 by a, a 220 millimeter You can't find these kind of bolts. They're very hard to find or they're very expensive like $30 a bolt So I ended up buying M10 and M8 all thread class 10.9, which is equivalent to grade 9 That's just what the metric system uses I guess so strong all thread. I got a meter of each for $10 so 
that's cheap. So we're looking at like $30 now. Uh, I just need to make this stuff and you know, my time's worth nothing. So we're looking at, yeah, $30 and I'm going to make these blast plates that are sold for 300 to $400. So there's some good savings in there. Uh, if you know how to weld and measure stuff, you can do this. And I gave you the measurements. So if you want to take the shot, this is for a uh, Subaru 5MT transmission blast plates. Those are the measurements. I'll let you know how they work out. And that's pretty much all the material you'll need. Okay, so the brackets are done. Uh, they are by no means perfect, but they will work for what I need. So next thing I need to do is uh, I need to cut this square tube to length. Now, if you take a look here, this is, I don't know what size it is, but it was just in the scraps and I think it would work, but I think it's 14 gauge wall. Um, looks to be about half inch or maybe three eighths square tube, but uh, I'm gonna cut two pieces per bracket that span the entire length like this. So I need to cut four pieces and I measured it before and it looks like it's about 19 and a half centimeters that I need to cut. Okay, so I cut like kind of a 45, I just kind of eyeballed it. But I'm going to use this um, one to template the other ones to know where to cut it. That actually didn't work out too badly. They're all pretty even, as you can see. They're lined up and they look not too bad. They're going to be on there like sort of like that, not in those exact spots. Uh, and I got to clean up the edges, make sure that they sit right and stuff. But um, I got this eighth inch flat stock right here. Uh, it's two inches wide. So these are going to be spaced out two inches apart. And the plate's going to go on top of that and be welded to that. Um, and then I need to make one more. I guess after I figure out where that's going, I need to make one more of these square tube braces that goes up to this top bolt. So just from here to here. And that'll weld to this square tube. So I just need to do a couple measurements and stuff, and then I can figure out what length I need for those. And then I can cut them and then put an angle on one of those sides. Okay, so if you take a look, you can see I marked right and left. Um, and I got the um, cross braces lined up nice and even. Uh, what I did was uh, I took 
the measurement of the space that I had like right here between the bolt holes um, and then I divided it by two so I could mark the center line and then I added an inch to each side which would account for the two inch uh, flat plate and then just so I have some room to weld the flat plate onto the square tubing I uh, added an eighth of an inch past that mark and that's where I set these up so uh, the flat plate will lay on top with enough room to you know get, put a good bead on it and stuff and then from that um, marking right here I measured how far and how big of a piece I needed and it's I think it was eight and a half centimeters so I need to cut two eight and a half centimeter pieces of square tubing uh, and then also I think I'm gonna um, you know put these in the vise so they're even still but kind of knock these down maybe an eighth of an inch so that I have room to throw a bead down on the bottom I just want room to weld this stuff too and get it a nice strong weld All right, so there you have it. That's what it's gonna look like. You see, I got those other pieces up there. Uh, you just gotta imagine the flat piece right there. And uh, these braces are gonna keep my transmission from breaking, hopefully. This would actually make a pretty cool looking exhaust tip, I think. Okay, so I did what I said about cleaning them up, and now you can see that there's a little bit of a, a gap between the edge and the angle iron. Uh, they're still pretty equal. Some of the uh, stuff, I didn't grind it perfectly flat, but that's okay. Um, everything's going to weld up good. At least those are square. Uh, now I can take the measurement of the top to top to see how long I need to make the um, eighth inch flat, and I could cut that. All right, so this is what they're gonna look like. You can see I put the flat plate down. Everything's gonna be welded, of course, but there's a gap there, there's that brace, the holes. But yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at here. All right, so a lot has happened since the last clip. Uh, I didn't film the welding process because I didn't want to um, destroy my camera's like retina lens or whatever you call it, um, but and I'm also not the best welder, so I shouldn't really be teaching you guys because I don't know what I'm doing really. But um, this is what I got here. Basically what I showed you with the pieces, but now it's all welded up. Um, with these like cross supports, I just put a couple beads. Like you can see, I put a bead there, a bead there. I had a bead there. And the same thing on this bottom side. And then in the, in the middle, I also got beads down there. And then with this flat plate, I ran a full bead across. I welded that together. And then same thing on the other side. And you know, you can see that there's good penetration and all that's good stuff. Um, I also made these spacers, um, all different sizes for, you know, their own location. And so, yeah, right now I'm just gonna paint these up uh, just to keep them from rusting. And then uh, I'm gonna be able to install them now. So I was gonna use a truck bed liner um, to paint this but I found a rubberized undercoating that was cheaper. Uh, I've never used this stuff before, but it looks really weird. It's almost like that a wrinkle paint that people put on their valve covers, but it's like bubbly. It's super weird. You can see it bubbling. So this is the paint that I got. It's a Rust-Oleum um, undercoating. It's rubberized black. Um, and it's, I just got this because it, it's like rust resistant. It was uh, $5 for the can versus $10 for a can of the truck bed liner. So that's why I got this one. But yeah, we'll see how the finish looks after it's done drying. Okay, so brackets are done, painted. They uh, don't look that great, but it doesn't matter to me. Uh, you're not going to see them really. They just need to work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start getting these installed. I think what the plan is is since these bolts are all thread um, and I got nuts on each side, uh, I'm gonna just put the, the actual bolt in itself first and then once those are in place, then I'll hang the plates on the edge with the uh, spacers and then tighten them down to torque spec and stuff like that. If you take a look there, you can see, got those two bolts in, 
that bolt on the bottom end and that bolt on the top end. That top bolt's the hard one to get in. All these other ones you can get in with the transmission still in place, but uh, you have to like lower it quite a bit and kind of tilt the transmission to get that top one in. But uh, they're all in now and they're sticking out on each side. So now I'm going to put the spacers on it and then uh, try to get the plates fitted up properly. Uh, I probably also need to remove this um, bracket right there that's to mount the O2 sensor to, but I don't really need that anymore. Okay, so um, I got the spacers on. I'm hoping they line up good, but we'll see. You can see that big one in the back. Um, I'm going to try to put the plates on now. I know that that hose is in the way, but I can't do much about that. Apologize. Okay, so I got the torque wrench out. We're gonna torque the back to eight millimeter bolts to 38 Newton meters, which is 28 foot pounds. Transmission braces are in, as you can see. I got everything torqued down. They were a very big pain in the butt to get in. So there's the other one. They look all right on the car now, but um, the issue I was coming across, so those front bolts are 10 millimeter bolts. So I got 10 millimeter class 10.9 nuts for them. Now the rear ones are eight millimeter and uh, the hardware store I went to, they didn't have class 10.9 uh, eight millimeter nuts. So I had to get class 8.8, .8, which I thought would be okay. I really highly doubt that those are class 8.8 .8 because when I was tightening them down, torquing them to only 28 foot pounds, they stripped out. Like the just the threads just ripped out of the nut. So I had to go to the store again and I had to get class 10.9 nuts and they worked perfectly fine. Um, I used the old nuts that came off of the transmission on the top one and then I just got the new set for the bottom ones. But uh, everything's torqued down, it's done, it was a pain in the butt. But yeah, make sure you get the right hardware if you're going to take this on yourself. Make sure you get 10.9 or grade 8 if you want to size up or whatever. But now that that's done, I can get the transmission back into place where it's supposed to go. Get me closer to putting the engine in. Alright, so transmission's back in place. The mount's up. Uh, and you can see better now the uh, blast plates on both sides. And then let me show you underneath. So looking underneath, you can see the new bushings um, for the cross member now these back two bolts the 14 mils those are 51.6 foot pounds torque um, the front ones that are 17 millimeter those are 103 foot pounds the um, transmission mount to the transmission bolts there's four of them they're 14 mils those are 26 foot pounds and as well as those um, bushing mounts for the cross member are 26 foot pounds so that's it for the transmission stuff video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, please like the video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.